Good morning, everybody. Good to see everybody here this morning. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm told that there was a problem that not everybody received the call on Friday about what was going on this weekend. Um, those who didn't get the call, I changed the name of what I'm calling Fifth Sundays because freestyle was starting to get a little bit confusing to people and it was a little bit too cryptic. So I changed it to this, Songs and Scripture Sunday. I like the alliteration. So here we are, it's a fifth Sunday. We are going to share songs and scriptures. Opening scripture is coming from, well, it is Psalm 100. Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Let's pray together. Father God, thank you so much for this day that you've given to us and this time that we gather to worship you. Help us to be encouraged today through these songs and these scriptures that we share. And Father, I pray that our worship to you is a sweet-smelling sacrifice to you. Be with those who are not with us this morning for whatever reason. Comfort them. Heal them if they're sick. Encourage them and help them to come back at the next chance they get. Father, we thank you so much again for this time, but most of all for your son Jesus. It's in his name that I pray. Amen. I have picked out three songs. I hope you have picked out some songs as well. Um, and if you call out a song and I don't know it, we'll see if somebody else does. I'm not going to be here the whole time. Well, I'm not going to be standing up here the whole time. I will be here the whole time. Let's start with number 144. Number 144. <laughs> By the way, grab a songbook because none of the slides are going to be here because it's all spirit-driven. Number 144, O Worship the King. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh, worship the King of glory. children 
57. I know we've sung this one a couple times here. Number 57, great is thy faithfulness.
in my head for some reason. 9.57. If I start leading it too fast, I'm sorry. No, you're not. I apologize. How's that? <laughs> this world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then, Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. They're all expecting me, and that's one thing I know. My Savior pardoned me, and now I onward go. I know He'll take me through, though I am weak and bored, and I can't get at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't get at Up in glory land, we'll live eternally. The saints on every hand are shouting victory. Their song of sweetest praise drifts back from heaven's shore. And I can't be at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then, Lord, what will I do? In me from heaven's open door, and I can't be at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't be at home in this world anymore. Yeah. 
595. Ah, yes, 595. In the garden. I don't care what the title is in the book. Yeah. Yeah. 595. <clears throat> I come to the garden of I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in, and then the light from heaven filled my soul. It made my heart in love and broke my name above, and just a little talk with Jesus made me whole. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus, let us tell him about our troubles, he will hear our faintest cry, he will answer by and by. Jesus makes it right. 
Sometimes my path seems drear without a ray of cheer, and I've got a doubt may hide the light of day. The mists of sin may rise and hide the starry skies, but just a little talk with Jesus clears the way. Have a little talk with Jesus, let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry, he will answer by and by. Feel a little prayerful yearning as your heart and heaven is turning. You will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. I may have doubts and fears, my eyes be filled with tears. But Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. I go to him in prayer, he knows my every care, and just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. right now let us have a little talk with Jesus, let us tell him all about our troubles, he will hear our faintest cry, he will answer by and by. When you feel a little prayerful yearning, as your heart in heaven is turning, you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Communion, let's sing 318. 318. I know we sang it last week. It's okay. It's a good song. I mean, how can you go wrong with Bach? Right? <laughs> 318. And I will apologize up front in case I slip into the tenor part. <laughs> I have a lot of history with this song. Almost 40 years of history singing tenor on this song. Yeah, I know. Don't 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 cringe too much. No, it's definitely 40 years of history. Yeah, because this year's our 40th anniversary. Okay, 318. <clears throat> Sorry. <coughs> oh sacred head. Oh sacred head now. Thy pity will 
This morning we've come together to partake of the Lord's Supper. And to help prepare our minds, uh, I just wanted to read a short verse from Psalms, just to kind of help us to remember what we gained from Christ's death on the cross. we are reading from Psalm 32, starting in verse 1. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. We know that it is the spilling of Jesus' blood on the cross that that blood has covered our sins, that it's washed us clean. So as we uh, partake of the bread, remember the uh, fruit of the vine that represents that blood, let us remember these things, examine ourselves, and proclaim his death until he comes again. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this bread, this representation of your son's body that bore our sins on the cross, that was beaten and abused for our sake. Dear Heavenly Father, we can never truly understand the feelings that he was experiencing at that time, but we know that it was out of his love for us and his obedience to you that he endured these things. Be with us as we take of this. We pray that we'll do so in a manner that's worthy in your sight. Christ, I pray. Amen. Let's continue in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we continue this prayer, continuing to contemplate the final moments of your Son on this earth as a mortal human. Dear Heavenly Father, we think about the moments that he ate with his disciples where this supper was instituted knowing that he was going to suffer great pain and endure a long, painful death. We remember that his last moments with those disciples were to teach them how to serve one another. But even then, he humbled himself to wash their feet so that they might see an example of what true love is. Dear Heavenly Father, as we partake of this blood, we pray that we will contemplate not just the things that he did in life for us, but the things that he did in death, so that we have the hope of eternity with you in heaven, so that our sins are remembered against us no more. We pray all this in Christ's name. Seventy-four. We haven't sung this one in a while. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord, for Lord, loving me, and thank you, Lord, for blessing me. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole and saving my soul. Oh, my. 
it can serve me for eternity. Use my life in every way. Take hold of it today. I want to thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. As we do every Sunday, we've also set aside this time to take up an offering for the continuation of the work of the Lord's Church here in Augusta. Before we partake of the, or take up the offering, uh, I will read another brief passage in Psalm that just kind of stuck out of my mind this morning. In Psalm 34, starting in verse 8. O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that takes refuge in him. O fear the Lord, you as saints, for those who fear him have no lack. The young lion suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. This just kind of reminds me of how truly blessed we are, that we have everything that we need and more, and we've been blessed in that way so that we can give back, so that we can further the kingdom of the Lord here on earth. say a prayer for the offering. Dear Heavenly Father, as we look around us at the, the world that we are in, we see that you have spared nothing for us. That the beauty of the snow on the ground, the beauty of those creations, the birds and the animals, and even the friends and family that you've provided for us, we know how truly blessed we are. Dear Heavenly Father, the greatest blessing that you've given us, though, is the blessing of your Son, Jesus, so that we might have the way to be reunited with you. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray that we will remember how great this blessing is and that we will have a desire to share that blessing with others around us and that the offering that was taken up here will be used for that purpose. We pray all these things in Christ's name. section in Jonah. We don't normally read stuff out of the Old Testament, but Jonah's an interesting guy. He was always mad at God for something. And I hope we are not. Chapter 3. Starting in uh, verse uh, 6. The word reached the king of Nineveh and he rose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. And he issued a proclamation and published throughout Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, let neither man nor beast nor, uh, nor flock taste anything. Let them not feed or drink water. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth, and let them call out mightily to God. Let everyone turn from their his evil way, from the violence that is in his hand. Who knows? God may turn and relent, and turn from his fierce anger, so that we may not perish. 
the gods saw that uh, what they uh, did, how they turned from their uh, evil way. God relented uh, of the disaster that he had said he would do to them, and he didn't do it. Jonah was angry. Man, he was angry. You ever felt that way sometimes? But it displeased Jonah. I think it, I think it more than displeased Jonah. He was angry. Like it says, he was angry. And he prayed to the Lord and said, Oh Lord, is not this what I said when I was yet in my country? That is why I made haste to flee to Tarshish, or Tarshish. For I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and relenting from disaster. Therefore, now, O Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, Do you do well to be angry? Jonah went out of the city and sat to the east of the city, made a broth for himself there. He sat under it, and he sat under it in the shade till he should see what would become of the city. Now the Lord appointed a plant made it come up over Jonah, that he might be uh, be a shade over his head, to save him from his discomfort. I think Jonah was uh, thankful for that. So Jonah was exceedingly glad because of the plan. But when dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm <laughs> that attacked the plant. And so it withered. When the sun arose, God appointed a scorching east wind, and the sun beat down on his head, the head of Jonah, so he was faint. He asked that he might die and say, Is it better for me to die than to live? But God said to Jonah, You do well to be angry for the plant, uh, for the plant. Do you do well? angry for the plant? And he said, yes, I do well to be angry, angry enough to die. And the Lord said, you pity the plant for which you did not labor, nor did you make it grow, which came into the being into the night and perished in the night. And should not I pity Nineveh, the great city in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left and so much cattle. Jonah was messed up. <laughs> but we can be messed up too. So, so just take that to heart that we're not we're not special. We're we're saved by grace from God. Number 613. Number 613. I'm his filled with transition, not a broken group instead. Oh, to his hand, to God's 
And I thought two things when we sang that song. The first thought was, I was a freshman in college before I stood up and be singing. <laughs> <laughs> Secondly, I, uh, I guess it's my upbringing the way my father was. I always watch the news. So first thing in the morning when I get up, I pick up my tablet and I look at the news feed to see if anything's happened overnight that could impact uh, my day at work, uh, working in or bank and things like that. And I look to see what's going on in the world. And this morning I thought, why do I do this? <laughs> because with the instant communication that we have over the last, I guess, 20, 30 years now with cable news as opposed to the 30 minute newscast that was at dinner time that I was used to growing up. But now with the internet, which is still relatively new in the overall scheme of things, we have instant communication and we can just see at an instant just how broken the world is. But we sang victory in Jesus. And I was thinking, Jonah, he probably thought the same thing all those thousands of years ago. How could it get any worse? Victory in Jesus. We already have the victory. We just need to live accordingly to it and accept it. And getting back to scripture that Sherry picked out, Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 5, the first seven verses. A lot of guidance on just how to live your life. Pretty simple stuff. Guard your steps when you go to the house of God. Go near to listen rather than to offer the sacrifice of fools who do not know what they are doing. Do not be quick with your mouth. Do not be hasty in your heart to utter anything before God. God is in heaven and you are on earth. So let your words be few. As a dream comes when there are many cares, so the speech of a, of a fool when there are many words. When you make a vow to God, do not delay in fulfilling it. He has no pleasure in fools. Fulfill your vow. It is better not to vow than to make a vow and not fulfill it. Do not let your mouth lead you into sin. Do not protest the temple messenger. My vow was a mistake. Why should God be angry at you? Why should God be angry at what you say and destroy the work of your hands? Much dreaming and many words are meaningless. Therefore, stand in awe of God. Probably if I look back on my life, uh, the times I've had the most struggles are probably when I didn't adhere to these words. Many like them in the scriptures. We can take this time now. Pray for those who are in need that are on our list or add to the list as needed. What I'm going to do is go down each category and speak the names of those that are on our list. And then if anybody afterwards has any updates on how uh, somebody on the list is doing, or if anybody is on the list that's here and wants to give us an update on how they're doing or how their, uh, their name taken off, um, that will be the opportunity to do so. So first, we're going to pray for those affected by cancer, either directly or indirectly. There's Mary Hoagland, myself, Lorraine Cox, uh, Dottie's friend Darlene, Gladys, Janice Prashoet's daughter, Rona. A friend of Sherry and I's, Forrest Warren. And Helen White Zurich. Does anybody have any updates on any of these folks, how they're doing? I know Forrest, uh, I have not heard since our last time we <coughs> talked about him. And as I said then, and I still say again, no news is good news when it comes to how Forrest is doing. Right? Right, Sherry, Darlene. I will be, um, because of some of the medication I'm on, the steroids I'm on, and over the last few months I've had to go see an eye doctor again. It turned out I have some steroid, uh, cataracts that have been induced by steroids. So mm -hmm. in the month of February, I'll have my cataracts removed. 
but also it's my, um, it'll be two years post-transplant and I also have to get my last rounds of vaccinations and those can be tough to, once they get into your system, that kind of lays me out for a few days. And um, then also we have another trip scheduled down to Boston with Dana Farber for one more, you know, for two year post transplant. I have to meet with Dr. Munchie, so. Um, it's just a regular checkup. Yeah. This is a regular checkup, but also it's to uh, hopefully, um, a lot of the meds I'm on have been reduced since the last milestone, last August, but hopefully that uh, going forward that the steroids that I'm on will be totally eliminated. It'll just be the daily chemo. Um, so I asked for prayers. So, so if I if I come in in February and I look a little out of sorts or <laughs> tired or fatigued or uh, that may be the reason. And so just ask for patience with that. Um, pray for those dealing with other medical problems. Uh, James Bias, Eric Chipetta, Cepeta, Excuse me. Uh, of course, Harvey and uh, Patty Doyle. Grace, uh, Grace's brother-in-law, Ed, Larry, Larry Genther, Lennis Graham, Robert Tier's stepfather, Charlie Harrison, uh, Paul Jones, my father-in-law, Anita Pellin, Ronnie Levesque, Frida, uh, Janice's daughter, Ginny, her son, Alan, and again, her daughter, Rona, her nephew Michael, and her grandson James. Alicia Ramsdale, Nancy Rose, Marie. And they're all waiting, well, Marie, you're waiting for surgery for your shoulder. That's, yeah. in case anyone hasn't, I'm pretty sure everyone knows that. <coughs> That's only been within the last couple of weeks that we've been yeah. aware, so. Okay. Uh, Sam, uh, Walter Weiser, Jerry Wilder, and Paula. I know Paula's having trouble healing the spot where she had her surgery with the bones in stage. Okay. But the incision doesn't want to heal. Okay, so she, she's still she's still on the mend for on the mend and it's slow. Yeah. And then she had pneumonia earlier, so she's she's really on the mend from a lot of things. Lot of she needs some time for her body to recover. Okay. Anybody else? I had to have a, a pre, uh, uh, pre, I guess it's colonoscopy, it's a test that they give you, and then that, that came up as positive, so I have to go in and do a, a real colonoscopy, and they're in the process of scheduling that now, so I don't think it's anything because I had that before, um, the false positive, I was just going to check it out and make sure it's not. Pray for those who, not necessarily medical issues, but difficulties and struggles as we go, go about our days. Uh, Zach Butler and family, and family, excuse me, uh, Gretchen, uh, Gretchen's son who lost uh, everything in a house fire, and that was just this past last Saturday. Uh, yes, yes we can have been within the last week and a half. So. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and again, Harvey and the Doyle family. Uh, Beatrice's friend, Mark Frank. And her sister Mary, her sons Cameron and Car and also Carl Lewis as well. Jonathan Austin, and Matt Perry and Matt's sister Ruth. Donna Roman and her family, the Rosie family, and Tanya Stroud. Any additions or of course congratulations to Anne Marie Perry. <laughs> She's just a little kid. I know. Penny in the picture too. The proud father sitting in the back there. So good to see you with us, Matt. I know you're proud of her. Okay, let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for being our God. We thank you for your showing your the greatness of your power every day, whether it's the change of seasons, the 
ability to do the things that we do with the blessings that you've bestowed upon us. Your power and your glory is shown in so many ways, Father, and we pray for forgiveness when we neglect to give you the honor that you are so worthy of. Father, we lift up the names of those we have just read to you. Only you know the extent of the illnesses, all the troubles that each of us are having, that these folks are having. We pray that as we look to you for guidance, that your guiding hand will be amongst them and amongst us to seek healing, to tend to each other as they're healing, and to know that you are God and you are in control. We pray a blessing upon these names. And it's through your son's name that we pray. Amen. We have time for a closing song. Anyone have any quick closing song? 23. 23? That's a good song. stand as we sing this song. Yes, we do.
announcements above and beyond what's in there. Workday, which I forgot to put in the bulletin, there's a workday on the 11th of February here at the building starting at 8 o'clock. Ladies Fellowship is on the 4th, which is next sat this Saturday, and then the following Saturday we have a work day. A lot of work to be done. Always. There's lots of work to be done. Does anybody have uh, anything else they'd like to announce or any thing you'd like to say? Okay. And there's refreshments downstairs after after that. Okay. Yeah. Both in Scripture, Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 13. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in prayer. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Let's pray again. Father in heaven, we pray that your name has been lifted up through these songs that we have sung. We pray that our hearts have been touched so we have grown closer to you. That we have learned from the lyrics that have been written so many years ago. And put the melody that we could sing and find joy in our hearts while we sing. We pray now, Father. And we take the words from your word that have been read as well. Pray that they, these words touch our lives so we can be better servants to you and live our lives accordingly. Pray a blessing upon us as we go through this week so that we can be safe, continue to meet at each time that we do. And we pray through your son's name.